be official. I'm Stephen Samuel. I'm Stella Bennett. I'm Brenda. And the project that we did this quarter is on the impending uh, Cincinnati, the new casino here that's going to be coming to the city. And it, it is going to be located um, at the Broadway Comet site, which is just off of I-71 and currently uh, the location of 1,600 parking spaces. And the reason uh, that we did this as a project is that the American Institute of Architects, the Cincinnati chapter, had a design charrette here a few weeks ago. And so we were asked to kind of take it to the next level and to look at um, the proposals that came out of that, and as well as look at it from, from new fresh eyes and see what we could propose for the casino. So to do that, and having gone through the charrette, we really kind of challenged ourselves to look at it in a way that would bring some original ideas to the forefront and not just appear to be something very formulaic. And so what we did was we looked at the casino from four different perspectives. And that is the Pendleton resident, the downtown business, the Cincinnati resident, and the regional visitor. And having been part of the charrette and some other public meetings, we gleaned what their major concerns were. For the Pendleton resident, it's that they were really um, what's really important to them is that the casino is a uh, good neighbor and that the light and the noise and the crime that might come from that space is, is mitigated and that their parking you know, isn't sacrificed. For the downtown business, what's important to them is that the casino is, is a partner and is a, is a new asset and brings business and cross promotes. <clears throat> For the Cincinnati resident, which is, we took as really kind of someone who doesn't necessarily live downtown, but certainly lives in the, in the MSA. What their concern is, is that the casino brings jobs and is a catalyst for the city as a whole and brings economic development to the area. And that for when they go downtown, it is uh, yet another choice for them for entertainment, and for, for reasons to visit our downtown. And for the regional visitor, but their concern is traffic, getting here, that it's safe to visit the area, and, and again, that the casino adds something to the overall experience, but instead of just from a daytime um, or a one-day user like a Cincinnati resident, it might be for like a 24-hour period and include hotels, etc. So looking at that, we came up with um, a, a group of kind of overarching goals. Um, and those are to preserve and enhance the view um, from the Pendleton perspective, new neighborhood parking regulations to mitigate that light and the noise, to transform corridors into destinations, to create something that's much bigger than a casino, which we propose as an entertainment district, to provide ample parking, good transportation in and out of the site, to develop external programming outside of the casino, job training, and, and ways for the casino to be um, a vested interest in, for the city. So the first thing we did is we kind of wanted to examine each of these uh, perspectives and how they fit into the regional, regional relationship of where the casino fits within downtown. So um, you have a large, the I-71 corridor and the I-75 corridor and big regional destinations like Kings Island, um, Newport on the levee, <clears throat> downtown the CBD. Um, and so you can see, as you zoom out and in, um, the regional visitor, the Cincinnati resident, the Pendleton resident, and the downtown business is kind of in that, and a little bit larger than the Pendleton resident. Um, so moving on, we first kind of distilled each one of these perspectives into what is the most basic element of what matters to these people. So for the Pendleton residents, it's all about a buffer between what happens on the casino site uh, and where you know where they live. For a downtown business, it's all about using <clears throat> the idea of corridors as a as a magnet to pull activity and life and people from the casino to their existing businesses. For the Cincinnati resident, um, jobs, uh, money, philanthropy. We'll talk about some of those later. And for the regional visitor, easy access um, to parking and a good time. Um, basically, <clears throat> quickly. The casino is currently programmed for 400, I'm sorry, for 350,000 square feet of actual gaming uh, activity and 150,000 square feet of non-gaming activity. Um, so that's retail and restaurants, um, maybe even a performance venue, something of that nature. Uh, 
we are proposing, and Steve will explain it more, the idea of, a t of an entertainment district surrounding um, the casino. Uh, and I'll actually let Stephen talk about exploding the program of uses from within the casino out into the community. He did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's taking those uses um, and truly really making sure that we turn them from just being internal to external. So it's easy for a casino to be built like a box. And there's certainly a lot of people out there that, that, are, that believe that that's going to happen. And they're going to keep the restaurants and the retail faced in. But a, a fundamental principle of everything that you're going to see over the next um, two posters is really based on the idea of bringing these uses to the exterior of the site and then expanding those uses throughout the neighborhood. So we are no longer looking at the casino site, which is this 22 acres here, but really a district area of mixed uses and of, of retail and, and bars and restaurants um, and, and just a vibrant life around that area. So next thing we, we're going to examine each one of these <coughs> perspectives in a, a, a little bit more detail. Uh, I'll cover compatibility here, and then I'll turn it over to Carly for parking. Um, so if you're a Pendleton resident and you're living and working in the community every day, one of your biggest problems is going to be, like Stephen said, light and noise. And how does this? What does this thing look like? And how does it affect me from a visual um, and a programmatic standpoint? Um, this is an existing building across the street. <coughs> So we wanted to present kind of a section view of the possibilities for what Pendleton residents could look at when they're looking at the casino site. Uh, street, you know, a, a, an upfront street facade, but one that kind of pulls back as it gets higher, so you don't have an overwhelming feeling of mass. Um, and then the idea of, of a green roof or a landscape roof to not only be environmentally friendly, but also be pretty um, for Pendleton residents and Mount Adams residents and others who have a, a direct view of the site. Um, on, on the street level, this is Redding Road, so Pendleton would be to your right here, and then this would be, be the casino site. We focused on, we're not architects, but we focused on the idea of splitting up this facade horizontally um, and as well as vertically to create a lot of interest and bring people from the community into the casino, but also to kind of, like Stephen was talking about, push people from within the casino to the outside and along the streetscape and have them really experience the neighborhood while they're there to also experience the casino. Um, so that's one of the biggest problems with Pendleton residents is, is compatibility and, and view sheds. Uh, I'll let Carly talk about uh, parking solutions. So in addition to compatibility, which Phil just talked about, the other issue that Pendleton residents are really concerned about is parking. And like Stephen uh, mentioned before, there's 1,600 um, communal parking spots on this site. And so with the new casino development, those are going to be taken away. And a lot of those parking spaces are used by Pendleton residents to park here and then just go to their um, homes in the Pendleton neighborhood. So what we did in order to, what we proposed in order to um, counteract the loss of these parking spaces is we identified five different quadrants in the city. And we looked at what were the parking availability of the spots as of March 2010, what, how many spots are available in those, thinking that Neighborhood parking permits would be um, instituted in the in the Pendleton area, but also that parking situations can, or parking spaces can be validated in these um, satellite garages, so that Pendleton residents would still be able to use um, parking spaces from throughout the city. 